Hi, it's Kathleen, and last week I found this beautiful blue linen suit at the thrift store, and I said, yeah, I'm gonna need, I'm gonna need that. But I wanted to do something a little bit special with it. So let's upcycle it, let's make it our own, and hopefully we end up with something pretty cool. So I've been wanting to try printing on clothing for a while, and I thought this might be a good opportunity. So I'm thinking something like this, but using bleach and stamps that I make myself. And funnily enough, Elise in the comments had the same idea, so same wavelength. I don't think it's gonna turn out this cleanly because I'm not using ink, I'm using bleach, so it's probably gonna bleed and be kind of messy, but I like that vibe. So maybe it'll also kind of look a little bit something like this. But before we do any of that, I need to go get supplies and do a little bit of sketching, a little bit of brainstorming. So let's go. So before we start doing anything, we need to decide what we're gonna do. So I've been doing a little sketching and I've come up with quite a few ideas. I know I wanna do kind of like a play on a checkerboard print makey relief style pattern is the goal. But what is the pattern actually gonna be? Well, here are the options. I put them on Instagram. We'll see what y'all think about them. If you wanna follow me on Instagram, you can. Kathleen Illustrated, I post polls sometimes or ask questions that relate to videos. So if you wanna be in the know, if you wanna get the first and freshest scoop, that's the place to be. So while we're waiting for the denizens of Instagram to give their opinion, let me fill you in on the supplies you're gonna need for this thrift flip. First things first, we're gonna need something to actually print on. In my case, we have this 100% linen top and bottoms. If you're using dye or bleach, natural materials are gonna be your friend. But if you're using ink or paint, most any fabric will probably be okay. You just might need a couple coats depending on how thick it is. Next, you're gonna need something to actually make the stamps. So I'm trying carvable printing blocks and a lino cutting tool. However, I'm gonna give you a little bit of a spoiler. If you want to use bleach on a coarse material like linen, I'm gonna recommend that you use something more absorbent to make your stamp like a kitchen sponge maybe. These linoleum blocks are just better suited for thinner fabrics or paper since they don't absorb anything. You're also gonna need something sturdy to act as the backing for your stamp. So I went with some wood pieces and wooden coasters that I found at the craft store and they ended up being kind of perfect. To attach the stamp to the backing, you're gonna need some sort of strong glue. And of course, you're also gonna need your ink of choice. So I'm using bleach or you could use paint or whatever you want. If you are using bleach though, you're gonna need some extra things like rubber gloves. And if that's a lot of information, no worries. I'll leave a link down below with more detailed notes about the process. Let's see how this poll on Instagram is doing. Ooh, okay. Option B has pulled ahead. So that's the checkerboard, the little star motif. And if I'm honest, that's my favorite option. So since it's in first place and it's also my favorite, I'm I'm just gonna plow ahead and we can start making some stamps. And action. Here's an example of stamps someone else made. Here's an example of a stamp that I made. It's a tiger. So we need a couple different stamps for this pattern. One of them is just gonna be just like this, just a, a rectangle with no details. And then I'm also gonna make one that's pretty much the same thing, but I'm gonna carve a star into it and we'll use it like intermittently throughout the checkerboard. So these are my checkerboard makers. And then I also got smaller ones and I figured we can make a couple different star patterns to put in the squares that don't get bleached, like here, to create some visual interest within our pattern. So first things first, I'm gonna make my two rectangle stamps and one of them I need to carve. So time-lapse commence. <laughs>
Welcome to my laboratory. So somehow I already got bleach on these pants. So we're off to a great start. We got gloves. We got peroxide for a peroxide bath after I'm done so the bleach stops eating the fabric. And I've got my AirPods so I can listen to my fairy smut while I bleach this suit. Oh, and I have my stamps. They turned out so well, dude. Are these not so cute? So first I'm gonna build the big rectangular pattern and then we'll go in afterwards and add these where we want to. Here's my little makeshift stamp pad. It's just paper towels with a little bit of the bleach mixture on it. Let's just, let's just dive in, let's just try it. That wasn't as satisfying as I thought it was gonna be. And she stamp. Oh, it's already coming out. Okay, keep going, keep going. As you can see, this current process is achieving a really subtle result. It's more of like a light blue on top of the original blue. But I really wanted that blue and white high contrast checkerboard. So this is why I recommended in the beginning that maybe you use something like a sponge to make your stamps instead of rubber so that you get more bleach pressed on in that initial stamping. Luckily for me, I had some sponge brushes on hand. So I was able to go in and hand brush some of my bleach along the edges where things weren't turning white and ended up with something pretty cool. This is my first time trying it on. I haven't seen it yet. I'm gonna look in the mirror. can see it. Let's do the reveal. I'm obsessed. Were you expecting this to come out so cool? I was not. There's just so much to look at. So I gotta admit, using the rubber stamps didn't work so well for such a coarse fabric. I feel like it would've worked well for like a jersey, a soft cotton. But to get around that issue, I just went in with a little sponge brush and went full Bob Ross on that bad boy. And thus we ended up with this beautiful, organic, one of a kind, starry checkerboard. I'm trying to find my favorite section. I think the front of this leg looks pretty good. How's the butt look? You can be honest. I also wasn't expecting this to give off such quasi clown suit vibes. And I gotta say, I'm loving it. So I'm imagining this, you're going to the pool, throw this on over your bikini, and suddenly you're a pool clown. You could rock this look just taking a little summer bike ride. Or maybe we should try some like chonky shoes and a little bag. And suddenly we're ready for a little coffee date. This is also kind of like upscale painters coveralls, complete with the boots and the bleach stains. And since I mentioned a coffee date, that actually sounds really good. So I'm thinking we go grab a little drinky and I can answer some of the questions that you left for me last week. Sound good? Let's go. Do you want to come? Okay. All right, I know this was supposed to be a coffee date, but does overpriced orange juice count? It was either that or a 64 ounce bottle of lemonade, which I will probably drink after this. Does anyone else go completely feral when they're home alone? Because I definitely had popsicles and pistachios and lemonade last night for dinner. Okay, let's answer some questions. So last week I asked y'all for some cues for me to A during this week's video because I anticipated some calm time lapses. And then I didn't really take any time lapses. So let's just do this right now. First things first, I realized that when I started making videos last fall, I never actually introduced myself. I just started filming myself going to the thrift store and acted like we were already best friends. Sorry. So let me do that now. Hi, I'm Kathleen, as you know, and I like to go thrifting and I like art and anime and clowns, among other things, but that sums it up pretty well. I'm from Ohio, that's where I currently live, although I've spent a lot of time living in the Bay Area of California. And I live here with my sweet boy Kakashi and my other sweet boy Gus, who's not here or else he would come say hi. So I guess we can start with the biggest group of questions, which was about thrifting. Catherine Art wants to know, when did your love of thrifting begin? 
great question. I'd say it began like when I was a kid. I have an older cousin, Emma, hey girl, who was like my idol, the older sister I never had, and she and her mom loved to go thrifting, so sometimes they would take me with them. And that's really where it all began. I think I kind of hit my thrifting stride though in high school and started my unhinged style journey then. I actually still have some shoes that I found in high school at the thrift store, let me show you. They're the best. You might have seen them in some of my try-on clips, these slip-on stompy Doc Martens. Hello? How cool are these? High school Kathleen knew that she had hit the jackpot, and she knew nothing else. She was so naive. Okay, speaking of high school Kathleen, one of my high school friends, Starfire, hi, asks, what is your favorite thrifting spot in Columbus? That is a toughie. I have a Google Maps set up on my phone that has all of my favorite thrift stores kind of pinned and then a description of like what they do well. This one has good homeware and this one has good dresses and this one has a nice bathroom. <laughs> so I think the one I'm loving the most right now is the Village Outlet Discount village discount outlet. The one we went to last week and the one where I got the designer leather purses to paint on, the prices are jacked up. I know I say that every video, but it's it's a little bit heinous at times, but if you're willing to spend a little bit extra, they have so much stuff and a lot of it's nice. A really big men's section too. I know sometimes the men's section is like just a bunch of brown suits, but this one has a nice men's section. All right, what has been your best thrift store find to date? Ooh, that's a t actually no, I know what it is. It's in my kitchen. Let's go. Welcome. Um, this is my best thrift find ever. She might be a little bit dusty. Hold on. I'm so sorry. This is an Alessi water kettle, and I found it at the thrift store in San Francisco that I took you to, um, and I saw it on the shelf just like this, and I said, that's an interesting shape for a handle. Wouldn't you agree? And I did a little bit of Googling on the fly, and I found it, and this is what I found. You see that price for a kettle that's not even electric? Yeah, so I was like, okay, this is incredible. But then I realized that I didn't have the little nozzle, the little mouthpiece that actually makes the whale sound when the water is boiling. And I was like, that's unacceptable. So then I went into rodent mode and uh, scoured through every single shelf trying to find a little piece of wood that I did find. And then when I was checking out at the cashier, there's this guy checking out behind me and he was like, that's a really nice water kettle. And I'm like, I know bro. Prized possess. Mwah. Also my dog is secondhand, so he's also my favorite thrifted item. Let's talk about him more. All right, wanna know about this guy? I'll tell you about this guy. Kashi, you wanna go up on the bed? We're gonna do a little interview, okay? Gotta help him up, his hips are bad. Up you go, little ranger. All right, sir, ASL, please. I guess he's feeling a little bit shy, so I'll just fill you in. Um, this is Kakashi. We believe he's about seven years old. We adopted him in 2016 um, from a local rescue called Speak for the Unspoken, which actually focuses on double merle dogs, which if you don't know, this like color patterning that you see in a lot of Australian Shepherds is called a merle. Kashi is a blue merle. So when you breed two different merle dogs together, you have the chance, and it's pretty high chance, of getting a double merle, which is not a genetic combo that you want. A lot of the times the dogs are blind or deaf or have other um, issues and that means that breeders will send them to shelters or have them euthanized and we don't want that because they're angel babies all that to say kashi is not a double merle but when the rescue was going to louisiana to pick up some double merle dogs from a shelter kashi was also there he's a little bayou dog from louisiana and they're like i guess we'll grab this guy too and now he's with us forever He's named after this guy from Naruto. This is Kakashi, which also means scarecrow in Japanese, which is why we named him Kakashi, because when we first got him, his fur was really straw-like and really short, actually. He's way fluffier than he used to be. Things he loves, Ball and Gus. He could kind of take or leave me, to be honest. Things he hates, his own poop, thunder. And that's pretty much it. He's a very good boy. Okay, we're back at the desk now. Hmm. Mel wants to know, why did you become a YouTuber? Were you nervous at first? How did you start? Etc. Etc. Good question. So here's a little bit of a secret. I've actually made YouTube videos for a long time. Like I was making them back in 2016, but looking back on them, they're incredibly cringe. 
so they don't exist anymore. But all that to say, I've always had an interest. I love watching YouTube. And then during 2020, 2021, where we were all spending a lot of time alone, I was like, hey, why don't I just film myself going to the thrift store and I can make some friends online. Were you nervous the first time? No, although I'm sure if you went back and watched the videos from like eight or nine months ago, the energy level would be different. But one, I didn't think anyone was gonna watch, so there's nothing to really be nervous about. And then two, this kind of moves into the next question about work. I've done a lot of live streaming. A lot of it. So talking to a camera isn't really anything new for me. It feels pretty comfortable maybe too comfortable sometimes. So moving into the next question, what is your day job? What's the day in your life like? How long have you been doing it? How did you come to it as a career? So when I'm not making YouTube videos, I am a creative director at Adobe. I focus on making tutorials and working with artists to share their processes and teaching other people how to make cool stuff. Here's kind of a smattering of the type of stuff that I have done. And that includes a lot of live streaming on something called Adobe Live. It's a good time if you're interested in learning about art and design, I recommend it. You can go here to check it out. It's free too. Not me shameless plugging my work, but it's a great resource. I don't really live stream very much anymore though, so don't expect to see my face up there. But if I do, I'll let you know. I'll give you a heads up. And to go to the question of how did you get your job, I actually started as an intern. So between my junior and senior year of college, I spent the summer working on tutorials. Hmm, and what is a day in my life like doing that for work? It is spent in this room. This is not only my filming set up in my art studio but also my work from home office and every day is pretty different whether I'm working with artists on creative assets or developing tutorials sometimes even making TikToks it's a good time maybe I can make a video about that in the future I feel like work from home what I do in a day vlogs are kind of fun to watch sometimes I don't know okay so to close out this question and answer section I hear you loud and clear about the request for a house tour and I would love to do that sometime I get it you want the details on these cinder block walls what if I just lived in a prison, like a really nice prison this entire time and you didn't know? I mean, I don't, but what if I did? What if my entire channel was an ARG? It's not. Anyways, here's the thing about the house tour. I really want to do an office slash art studio makeover before that, and that's been in the works for literally months. I'm just trying to find the last little bits and pieces to finish things out and maybe even find a sponsorship for it. I don't know. But once I can pull that together, the full house tour will also come together. Oh, actually we do have one more question and this really will finish out the Q&A section. Can you share some of your biggest, baddest dream scenario video project ideas? Great question. I think the biggest, baddest dream scenario video that is at the forefront of my mind right now and I can't really see past it is I would love to take you all thrifting in Japan with me. I got to do that in 2019 and I'm frothing at the mouth to get back and do it again. And I feel like it'd be really fun to do that together. Other than that, I feel like we're still just a little baby YouTube channel and who knows what the future holds, but I just wanna keep having a good time. I just wanna keep bringing a little bit of good natured chaos into the world and continue to treasure hunt at the thrift store and make weird stuff together. And with that, I'll say thank you so much for being here. I appreciate it. Thanks for putting in your questions. If you have more, you can put them down in the comments. I can answer them there. Send them over on Instagram at Kathleen Illustrated. And if you enjoyed this video and want to check out my future videos, please feel free to subscribe as well. I would appreciate that also. I will be back next week. I believe we're going to be looking for a vintage dress that I can wear to a wedding. It's coming up very soon, so I need to find it quickly. Maybe we'll even do some online vintage shopping. I don't know. But until then, if you want to keep watching my videos, you can check out my Thrifty Finds playlist or maybe watch my most recent video if you haven't watched it already. And I'll leave you to it. I love you. Have a great week. Goodbye.